Can you hear me in the back? My name is uh, Brett Mitchell, and this is my sidekick. Rob Woodruff. Yay! And welcome to the joint worship service of La Mesa Presbyterian Church and? Second Presbyterian Church. Let's hear it. All right, we're going with the mic. So we are excited to have this opportunity to worship Christ together as one. Uh, in this beautiful place of God's creation. We want to begin with a big word of thanks and a loud clapping to the Dukes of Albuquerque Ensemble. Let's hear it. And we also are thankful to God for the beautiful choir that has uh, come together this morning. Bright, shiny faces, one and all. So again, on behalf of La Mesa and Second Presbyterian Churches, we are hoping that this is not going to be a first and only, but something that continues every year. Rob. Awesome. Thank you. Just a few brief announcements that are germane to both churches. Um, the first is we just want to welcome any guests or visitors that it's your first time or you haven't been back for a long time to either congregation. Sandra, do you have anyone to introduce? Cousin Gloria Garcia. 
Mary Lou Gutierrez. Stand. Would you stand? Welcome, glad to have you with us. And friend, Manuel Torres. Manuel Torres. Glad to have you with us. We also are very blessed to have with us today Jaimito Quinones and Pam Quinones, who are in town from Lovington. In case you don't know, he's the son of Reverend Quinones. Glad to have you with us. Are there any others? We don't want to leave anyone out yet. Joyce and Chris Lieberman, they're here. We're very glad to have you with us. It is a total blessing. Yes, Mickey. Sister-in-law Priscilla Vigil, glad to have you with us. Good to see you again. Nady, you're gonna get to meet some special people a little later in the worship service. Uh, Phil Scheidbach and Bianca and Enzo, and we'll introduce you at more depth later. There is going to be uh, food afterwards, so you're invited to stay. Um, it's all over there. Thank you to everyone who spent time working hard to make that happen. Um, one shared announcement. Uh, we are all deeply invested and care about Camino de Vida uh, Fellowship of our Presbytery. Well, in case you hadn't heard, the Reverend Guillermo Yela's last Sunday at Camino de Vida is going to be Sunday, July 16th after our own respective worship services we will be invited um, to a despedida, a goodbye for he and Cydia. He received a call at Memorial Drive Presbyterian Church in Houston, where they have a, a Spanish congregation. And so um, we will want to send him off with lots of love. Um, I also just got a text momentarily a few minutes ago from Bruce Newton that said Salima Newton was just taken to the ER. So please keep her in your prayers. And if you haven't already, you are invited during worship to take out your cell phone. And then if you'd please put it to a silence mode for the duration of the service, we would appreciate it. Anything else you can think of, Brian? That's it. All right. Kind of. Oh, gathering music. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and as they do at La Mesa, good morning. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> now we got both families done. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Let us worship God. Jesus said, anyone who receives you receives me. Friends, we gather together in the presence of God, who welcomes us with open arms. Who receives us with open arms. 
who loves us unconditionally and bids us do the same with one another. Come, friends, let us worship God together. Jesús dijo, El que os recibe a vosotros me recibe a mí. Y el que me recibe a mí recibe a mí. Amigos, nos reunimos en la presencia de Dios que nos acoge con los brazos abiertos. Que nos recibe con los brazos abiertos. Que nos ama incondicionalmente y nos pide que hagamos lo mismo unos con otros. Venid, amigos, adoremos juntos a Dios. Now standing as you are able, in spirit or in body, let us sing the hymn, Today we are called to be disciples. called to confession. Patient God, we turn to you with open hearts, minds, and bodies, glad for the gift of grace that is foundational to our being, making it possible for us to confess all and know we are loved. Received our prayers as we pray. Each and every day you offer us new hope and special blessings from the rising of the sun to its descent. The light of your love pours on your creation. We love all these things, but we want to hold on to each of your blessings just for ourselves. Teach us to share openly and humanly with others. Forgive our selfishness and turn it to selflessness in service to you. Clear our minds and spirits and bodies from sadness to a sense of joy
Friends, hear the good news. God has again blessed our lives with hope and joy. Let us be at peace, friends, for God is with us. Amen. Escucha las buenas nuevas. Dios ha bendecido nuevamente nuestras vidas con esperanza y alegría. Estemos en paz y unidos, porque Dios está con nosotros. Amen. Let us pass the peace to one another. Please join us. more time with peace. At this time, I'd like to invite all the children and anyone young at heart that wants to come forward for the time with young disciples. crew coming. Welcome guys. We can't wait to see you. Shepherded with Luella who is very young at heart. Today is an exceptionally special day and there's really a lot more reasons than usual. Um, anyone want to take a guess at why today's worship is so special? Fourth of July is coming up. That's kind of a big deal. Are we indoors in the stuffy sanctuary today? 
you know, we're outside in God's creation. Um, and please raise your hand, and this has to include Brett, if you had a birthday in the last couple of days, and I know Samuel Par Porragas, raise your hand. Mike, would you hit it? <laughs> lives that we get to celebrate their birthday. We're thankful that Anita Romero Torres brought her car and has the trunk open. And if anyone has any non-perishable food to give to Roadrunner, uh, you can leave it in her trunk. Uh, we are excited to be outside, um, but there's a couple really extra special things going on today. We are doing both sacraments. We're doing the Lord's Supper, that's like the juice and the bread, and we're gonna have a baptism and we're doing it with two congregations uh, together as the body of Christ. And I think that's so special. Um, I wanna talk just a little bit only about the baptism today. The fancy word where this bowl usually sits is a font. And what do you see through the transparent bowl that is inside? What's inside that bowl? Water. What is water good for? Drinking it, should we have some? No, we probably better not do that. What What else is water helpful for? Staying hydrated, which is very critical. What about when swimming, which can be super fun? And also, what happens when we need to take a shower? Water cleanses us. Um, that is not lost on our faith. And today, um, a young disciple named Enzo Gael Scheidbach is gonna be baptized, and it means a lot of things. And a lot of Christians have different views of what it means. But a couple of the things we can affirm between all churches is that when this water is sprinkled on his head, it is a sign, not from any human beings, not from our churches, but from God, that he is God's chosen child. And guess what? Who can be baptized? Is it only for certain people? No, it's for everyone. Um, because God does indeed welcome all. And we're gonna hear today about how God welcomes us all to the table as well. It is so amazing that we have such a loving God who cares about us and wants us to share that care with everybody else. So should we say a little prayer? Almighty God, we thank you for your profound love. We thank you for ways that we can celebrate together, um, eating from the table and sharing your sacrament of baptism with Enzo. Be with us now. May your spirit fill us. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us join together in the prayer of illumination as it is found in your bulletin. Living God, with joy we celebrate the good news shared among all of us. Enliven our hearts by your spirit so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Dios vivo, con alegría celebramos las buenas nuevas compartida entre todos nosotros. Anima nuestros corazones con tu espíritu para que podamos proclamar la buena noticia de la vida eterna y abundante. Por Jesucristo oramos. Amen. I know this isn't in the bulletin, 
But as is the custom at La Mesa, let us stand as we uh, listen to the gospel lesson this morning. And please remain standing until I have concluded the reading in Spanish. Today's gospel lesson is found in the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Anyone who welcomes me and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives up, gives even a cold, cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. El que a vosotros recibe, a mí me recibe. Y el que me recibe a mí, recibe al que me envió. El que recibe a un profeta, por, cuen, por cuanto es profeta, recompensa de profeta recibirá. El que recibe a un justo, por cuanto es justo, recompensa de, de justo recibirá. Y cualquiera que de a un, uno de vosotros, y cualquiera con de a uno de estos pequeñitos, un vaso de agua fría solamente, por cuanto es discípulo, de cierto os digo que no perderá su recompensa. La palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Gracias a Dios. Please be seated. Let us pray. Beloved and holy God, you have gathered us this day in this beautiful surroundings, your creation, in which we are in awe and wonder. We rejoice when we feel a, a soft breeze pass by us. We are thankful for those who are gathered around us this day. We are enjoying being the people of God, remembering yet once again that what makes the church the church is not the building or the buildings, but being the people of God, face to face, side by side, front and back, all around. You surround us with your love, above and below, side to side, within and outside. For your gift of hospitality to us to be the people of God, we give you thanks. And may our collective minds, bodies, and spirits be brought together this day to be challenged by the text, recharged by the text, and guided by the text in our everyday lives. And the people of God said, Amen. In a past life, when I lived in Portland, Oregon, only five months ago, I was a docent at the Portland Art Museum. And one of the greatest joys I always had was when there was a new exhibit in which I would kind of put my hand over the plaque, giving the narrative and the artist's name, and I tried to figure out if I was that artist, what name would I give it? And it was always fun then to remove my hand and see that the artist and I either agreed about what the art was or we totally disagreed and thus the conversation began. Most recently, I walked into an exhibit of indigenous art of the Pacific Northwest people from a part of the world that I know quite well at the Seattle Art Museum. I came face to face with large totem poles incredibly powerfully carved masks and thick robes made of bark with the explanation of the term potlatch. Potlatch, a Chinook term meaning simply this, to give, to give. Up and down the Northwest coast from Oregon up into Alaska, there are potlatch huts 
and ceremonies marked culturally important events like a birth, the bestowing of an ancestral name, a marriage, an initiation into the dancing society, raising a new house or a totem pole, and of course, the observance of a death. The memorial potlatch held once a year, usually always around a death, is a time for final grieving, honoring the deceased, and passing down the name and the regalia, the headdress, the hats, the robes. Under the East thoughts that two halves make a whole, two halves make a whole, the unique protocol and entities expressing core beliefs and values. You see, each and every guest who comes to the potlatch receives a lavish gift in the capacity of a witness to the event that is now passing before us. Meanwhile, the tribes that are opposite of one another now come together as one, providing artwork to each other and services that are needed in order for the potlatch to be successful. Nora Donhauer of the Tlingit people said this, potlatch, this is our custom. This is our culture. This is how we were made. And Calvin Hunt of the Pacific Northwest Kwakut people said this, and I love this line, if we don't potlatch, our hearts will break. If we don't potlatch, our hearts will break. Or another way of saying this, to use the English vernacular, if we don't give, our hearts will break. If we don't give, our hearts will break. That's why I was so moved by the passage when Rob and I were trying to figure out what should be the gospel reading or epistle reading for today. This seemed to be striking a chord deep within me. Jesus says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, young in the faith in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. If we don't potlatch, our hearts will break. If we don't give a cup of water to the one in need, our hearts will break. Of course, this verse is preceded by the better known verse, just as you did it to the, one of the least of these who are members of my family, you have done it to me. Matthew 25, verse 40. Then there is the early church practice of extravagant gestures of hospitality in which the whole throng of those who believed were, quote, of one heart and one soul and one body, and no one claimed private ownership of any possession, but everything they owned was held in common. There was not one needy person among any of those in the earliest community of Christians, people of the way. For as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what they sold. Acts 4, verse 32 through 34. If we don't potlatch, our hearts will break. It is clearly evident that among the indigenous people of the Pacific Northwest, the early church and the church today, there is a call to continue this communitarian practice of giving and receiving till everyone's needs are met. No turning back. This is a core gesture, a core ritual of every and each culture, and the absence of such a practice would mean the demise of the culture and the society in which this practice was embedded. If we don't potlatch, our hearts will be broken and the community will be no more. The reason that this gesture of extravagant, persistent, caring hospitality of the native and early Christian community stands out so boldly is because of the widespread 
dearth of any such extravagant act of hospitality, let alone simple hospitality in today's world. There is no doubt that the wider society in which we live is operating not on a paradigm of abundance, but more or less on a paradigm of scarcity by which we live in a world that has come to normalize this simple principle, that there will never be enough water, there will never be enough food, there will never be enough shelter, there will never be enough health care, there will never be enough. Some will just simply have to die. That's where we live. That's the community that surrounds us. We live in a world of haves and have-nots, in which the chasm between these two is growing day by day, giving ourselves an excuse for not caring for all, but truncating and creating a weird version of the scripture in which Jesus somehow gives us an out to care for others. Friends, Rob and I have been to seminary, as many of you have as well, and we've read these scriptures, we've gone back and forth, back and forth, and we still, I still to this day can't find where they find this version. It is, though, under the book, Scarcity 101. The latest specs coming in fast and furiously are showing us that there is a rising cost and coverage of healthcare in the US. There is a rising fear of running out of fresh water, which was once a given in our world as Rob held up the bowl. There is a growing gap between the rich and poor growing exponentially around the world. Closer to home, there is the riddle of house, ho housing and homelessness continuing to linger in our society. We still have not figured out that riddle yet. And we live in a society in which many of us in our very own homes have rooms to give. Tonight, there will be many rooms in many of our houses and our apartments and our condos that are not being used. Meanwhile, on the streets of Albuquerque, there will be houseless and homeless people walking the city streets of Albuquerque. We live in a society in which justice is now so skewed that none of us feel safe, especially of those of us who have been targeted by the latest actions of the Supreme Court of the United States in which any straight artist can look at me as a gay man and simply say, because of the one you love, I will not serve you. In the 1960s, Woolworths became famous for that kind of practice. By the way, their demise has already been met. And the earth that we have been given by the creator that Rob and I keep pulling on on this beautiful day has been drawn and quartered with borders into mine and yours. And if you cross my border, we will be sure to kick you out as fast as possible. We will take apart your families in the name of a justice that makes no sense. It is largely a result that we are a people who in large part have had that luxury of getting what we want rather than focusing on what we need. We have had the luxury of getting what we want rather than simply taking what we need. While many of us who have lived in this modern age have come to accept this new norm of scarcity, have forgotten about any kind of abundance paradigm, we now accept, accept as status quo, everything is scarce, what comes breaking through, cracking, opening our self-imposed and human-constructed cocoon is Jesus in both word and deed. Jesus is all about abundance, not scarcity. Let me say that again. Jesus is all about abundance and not scarcity. Matthew 10, you see, is a sermon of sorts in which Jesus, who is traveling all around healing and teaching those disciples to send them out as laborers into the field two by two, giving them power to cure and heal those who are sick, reminding them that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. That's us. Instructing his disciples to proclaim and live the good news because the realm of God's love has come near in the person of Jesus. Jesus emphasizes that the disciples are to focus on doing what is right, what is good, 
for the common good of all rather than holding on and hurting others over a dogmatic right and fight on quote correct beliefs Jesus was clear abundance heal the sick raise the dead clean those with leprosy drive out evil Jesus calls us to have an undivided heart and to will one thing which is the practice of love of God to be shared with all regardless of gender sexual orientation class ability ethnicity race or nationality it matters not what your last name is but in getting there we often have to move out of our comfort zone that we are sent and understand that we are sent by Jesus who is sent by God to be associated with those who are lesser than who have few, fewer abilities and skills and resources and thus we are to practice giving we are per, we are encouraged to practice sharing and one of those risks that when we are being hospitable and welcoming others be it a disciple a righteous one or the least of these in an otherwise inhospitable world Jesus promised us that we will we will go ahead and cause the status quo to be quite upset for such extravagance is not what we should do even to give a cold cup of water to a child Jesus promises us when we do that, then we will be rewarded. If Jesus was arguing from the lesser to the greater, as he often did, we can imagine how pleased God is with this extravagant welcome of giving cups of water to all. As Evan Drake Howard wrote, quote, the more extravagant the welcome, the greater the refreshment, the deeper the grounding, the clearer the enlightenment, the stronger the inspiration that will flow from it. All who are welcome and those of us who welcome must be extravagant in both sincerity and persistence. We must be extravagant in both sincerity and persistence. For if not, our hearts will break. And what was incredible is that Jesus' place of welcome was able to travel with those wherever he went as he made people feel at home wherever he went and however they met him indeed one of the questions for us this morning is how did many of our churches move away from being living in a place to being welcoming and perceiving and sitting in a place of judgment and we which we decided and I've heard this from people from church to church to church we don't feel at home in that church anymore we don't feel at home in that church anymore In the end, the key to church growth in deepness of faith and in numbers is always to be found in the spirit of welcome. Jessica Gross of the New York Times wrote recently this article, what churches offer that nuns or no one who goes to church can still long for. And the answer was simply this. Those outside of the church are seeking one thing and one thing only. Ready? Community. Community. Simple, authentic, justice-seeking community. Let us be reminded that hospitality was and is the chief necessary act in all nomadic societies. That's why Jesus is pulling on this so strongly. That's why it is a key to all Christian discipleship. Hospitality is front and center, the cornerstone of everything we do as Christians. We know that welcoming strangers strikes a deep chord within us. It is a delight that arrives when human beings treat each other as human beings with honor, with respect, a little food. The old sign of Torah faithfulness is to take as a sign, house by house, those whom God expected to keep the old promise. Biblical scholar Richard Swanson wrote this. It goes so far as saying this. The security and the power of a secular society and empire around us, that practices, the practice of welcome will not go well. The practice of authentic hospitality in the empire will not go well because the empire doesn't trust in the promise of God. The empire does not trust 
in the promise of God. Rather, the empire prefers its own cunning authority girded with brute, utilitarian, and unitarian strength and raw reach for control over others. The empire cares not for hospitality. It wants to keep a nice, clean wedge between those who have and those who have not. That is why when someone opens up their heart to the promise of God, their doors are open to the promise. Like the little ones mentioned in the verse from Matthew, it does not escape God's notice. God pays attention to the smallest of gestures and the humblest of acts in the ordinary as God enters into our Lake Wobegon average ordinary lives. If we do not practice potlatch, our hearts will be broken. Let us practice potlatch, friends. Let us practice gestures of extravagant hospitality today, right where we worship and live together as Christ's body. Let us not only practice it here, but in this kind of gathering as we practice the generous hospitality in the act of Holy Communion and in the act of baptism. For to do so will make us a gathering, a hideout, rather than a place of learning, as we learn to live openly the life of pilgrims and discipleships. Quote, let us open our doors of our church buildings when the Holy Spirit comes knocking at the door, disturbing our members only meeting and reminding us that it is time to share our lives openly, writes theologian Barbara Brown Taylor. For when people come to our doors bringing wisdom and richness, just as we brought with us, we celebrate this gift. For after we worship God and Christ together, let us go with Jesus, the pilgrim God, the companion of our journey. Let us travel light on the road of life, opening hearts, minds, and bodies. What is beautiful about the Jewish and Christian gesture of hospitality, practicing great acts of generosity in the early church, much like the native Chinook people in the potlatch, is that it is always open-handed. That's right. We live in a society that's teaching us to do this. What we do in the church is teach people to do this. To open hearts, minds, and bodies. One of the best examples of hospitality was given to me by my friend Henry Nowen who wrote this. Hospitality primarily means the creation of a free space where the stranger can enter in and become a friend instead of an enemy. Hospitality, you see, is not meant to change people to believe what we believe, to live as we live, but to offer them a space where change can take place. It is not meant to bring people to our side, but to offer them a freedom with no dividing line. So come, people of La Mesa, come, people of Second Presbyterian Church, come, people of God, let us be bold, let us be courageous, let us not worry about the power of today's empire that's trying to teach people to be like this, especially in the political arena. Let us come like this. Let us practice potlatch with generous and humble acts of hospitality as God in Christ teaches us and may the Holy Spirit in us inspire in each one of us a desire to cross against and through the borders and boundaries of gender, sexual orientation, race, class, ability, ethnicity, nationality, and religion in which God sees none of those human constructed barriers and boundaries. Let us practice hospitality, open hands, open hearts, let us practice potlatch as we are co-workers with Christ, participating in God's loving action, bringing justice and healing to our world in a deep and deeper crisis, even with a simple cup of water, to give to the little ones in the name of a disciple, in the name of the Christ. If we don't potlatch, if we don't give, our hearts will be broken. For in that simple yet extravagant act of hospitality, there is the reward. Come, my faithful disciple. I love you. And the people of God said, Amen.
Christ, God's grace is exceptionally extravagant when it comes to feeding God's people. Think manna in the desert, think some fish and some loaves, think Jesus' sacrifice in this table. In response to God's incredible grace, extravagant grace, let us give a portion of what we have so we can share that hospitality and grace with others. Brett's going to come do the affirmation of faith, and then we're going to go straight into communion, I mean into uh, offering, Enjoy because uh, we're ready. <laughs> Please rise and body your spirit. <clears throat> Let us affirm the faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed found within your bulletin. People of God, this is what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing and join with me in singing together, Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love, found in your insert. Remember what I told you two minutes ago? It holds true. Let's just take one. Please be seated.
let us together pray. Generous God, you have abundantly blessed each one of us. Cause these gifts to be a blessing as they are put to work in your world. Amen. At this time, if Phil and Bianca and Enzo would please come forward with me and Brett. Friends, hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the source of all life, of the Redeemer and the Sustainer, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body, there is one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all, through all, and in all. And as many of you all were baptized in Christ, you have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer in this font, Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Here we go. We give you thanks, eternal God, that you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ sets us free from sin and death and opens the way to eternal life. We thank you, O oh God, for the waters of baptism. In it, we are all buried with Christ in Christ's death for it, we are raised to share in Christ's resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Bianca and Phil, would you answer the following questions? Do you desire Enzo to be baptized? We do. Relying on God's extravagant grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and teach that faith to Enzo? We do. And all here, friends, members of either church present, do you, as part of the body of Christ, promise to guide and nurture Enzo in word and deed and with love and prayer? And will you encourage him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of his church? Enzo Gael, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Enzo, you have been received into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church through baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you have become a member of the household of God to share with us in the ministry of Christ and the priesthood of all believers. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you into the body of Christ. Alleluia. Amen. And if you want to give a standing ovation, that'd be fine as well. <laughs>
Friends, rejoice and be glad. For God is our salvation. Rejoice and be glad. This is the table where God intends for us to be nourished. Jesus Christ, who sat at our tables, now invites us to be guests at his table. What we do here, we do in imitation of what Christ first did in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. So now we do as Jesus did, we take this bread and this cup, the produce of the earth and the fruit of human labor. In these, Jesus promises to be present through Christ and make us whole. Gracious God, receive our prayers and praise, for with purpose and compassion you gave of yourself, created our world, and called it good. Forming creatures of every size, shape, and color, you bless humanity with the gift of your image. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that you sent Jesus to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death. that you raised Jesus into the newness of life, overturning the power of death and establishing this bearer of new life and sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Spirit to gather the church by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. As I said in the sermon, I always like to do with the Lord's Prayer as well, unclench fists, open palms upwards to the heavens, in thankfulness to God as we pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. We remember that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Asimismo tomó la copa diciendo, esta es mi sangre derramada por los pecados de ustedes. Bebenlo en memoria mía. Before you, you have the sweet little cups and the sweet little wafers in a packaging that only Madison Avenue could figure out. <laughs> People, let us share the feast of Christ with one another using that which you have in your hand as we will do up here as well. Let us sing also as we do this, let us break bread together.
We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world with courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're invited to stand in body or spirit. Let us together sing in Christ, there is no east or west. Before I give the benediction, we need three or four able-bodied, willing souls who would help over here and bring food out because we have a potluck, a potlatch to uh, attend to after our worship together. The friends, the uh, words are true. If we do not give, if we do not receive, if our hands are not open, our hearts will break. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, sweet as it is, attend and be with you each and every day of your lives. Friends, our worship here has ended. Our pilgrimage continues. We'll see you on the pilgrim path. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.